All right, guys, how's it going? I'm pretty sure this is going to be a long video and there's going to be two parts to it. There is a link between both parts, but I really want to get this first part out of the way as fast as I possibly can. I'm sure you all remember the video, The Tech Press Loses the Plot, which I did three weeks ago and is well on its way to being one of my most popular videos. Now, in this video, I pointed out that low resolution gaming testing was not indicative of future performance. In other words, way back in 2012, guys like Computerbase and Anon Tech, the old classic tech press really, were benchmarking low resolution gaming for their CPU benchmarks, with the assumption that these low resolution gaming benchmarks would be a good indicator of future performance. You can watch that video and it points it all out. Suffice it to say that what they thought was going to happen did not pan out. And in actual fact, as we can see here, the opposite happened. And instead of FX losing ground, it actually caught up and overtook Sandy Bridge. Now, one or two people got upset by this video. And to make matters worse, of course, a bunch of AMD fanboys start running around spamming links to this video on their channels. And to be frank, this is why this whole thing got out of control. Some of you AMD fanboys are just a little bit too much. A bunch of you have been spamming links to this video and giving other reviewers hassle over it, which was not my intention but one or two in particular really took offence at it. And a couple of days later, we got Steve over at TechSpot, Hardware Unboxed Steve, who made an article or two and one or two videos. Now, I had a read through this. He's clearly upset and clearly I am the target of his ire. Now, I had actually singled out Steve before this to say, Steve, I am not talking about you in this video. And I made that very, very clear to him because I had just watched one of his videos that talked about this whole thing. How low resolution, low settings performance today is an indicator of higher resolution, higher performance in future. And again in this article, he reiterates it and he goes on to talk about well-researched reviews from the likes of Gamers Nexus and Tom's Hardware. Well, I mean, the first thing I did was go into Gamers Nexus and checked out their most recent benchmarks. Watch Dogs 2, 8370 is above the 2500K. Battlefield 1, the 8370 isn't in it. Ashes of the Singularity, the 8370 is above the 2500k. Grand Theft Auto 5, there's no 2500k or 8370 there. Metro Last Light, 8370 is above the 2500k. So that is half of the gamers' Nexus benchmark suite where FX beats Sandy Bridge. Now, in this article and in another video, Steve showed the 2500k easily beating FX by around 20%. So Computerbase is showing FX winning by 10%, and yet Steve is showing Sandy Bridge winning by 20%. That's a 30% gap. Of course, it wasn't very long before the fanboys and idiots got onto my channel and started giving me a bunch of crap over this. So for some reason, hardware unbox numbers are more believable than computer bases numbers. I guess it really depends on what you want to believe. I let all the comments on Steve's articles and video go. I got a bunch of this trolling nonsense. I let it go. It was starting to annoy me though. And then later on, Kyle over at Bitwit made a rather poor assassination attempt on my video where he basically suggested that because I didn't test myself, computer bases numbers were invalid. Kyle did get one thing right. We should get our information from various sources and not trust one. However, he then messed up completely by taking hardware and box numbers as gospel while declaring computer bases invalid. I left a long comment pointing out everything that I meant and that was it. Well, the whole point about this is, of course, I did do my research. I chose to show this computer-based numbers because they were interesting. And as I had said, the video was already 20 minutes long. I did, however, have a bunch of other results. I don't make claims like this based on one set of results. So take a look at these charts proving my point. The one I just talked about, Computer Base, 2012 with a GTX 680. Sandy Bridge was 10% ahead. Roll on to 2017. Different games, of course. That was the point. The games change. And FX was now ahead by 10%. Back in 2012, Anon Tech reviewed FX 8350 and found the 2500K was 17.4% ahead. Roll on to 2017, they no longer had the 2500K and were instead using the 2600K. They'd also moved on to an FX 8370 and the difference now was only 8%. You can probably figure out that the 2600K is a far bigger upgrade over the 2500K than the 8370 is over the 8350. But there you go, their old 2012 numbers where they showed 1680 by 1050 resolution and 1024 by 768 resolution, which was supposed to show future performance at 1080p simply did not materialize. Moving on to the tech report, in 2012, using a 7950, there was a 14.2% lead for the 2500K. Roll on to 2017, 
the difference is 12.2%. Again, however, they're now moved on to a 2600K and an FX8370. Obviously, there's not a huge difference here. The main reason for that, though, was likely to be that they were using a 7950 back in 2012. Had they used a faster graphics card, this difference would likely have been a little bit higher. An awful lot depends on the games they choose. And finally, PC games hardware. Back in 2012, their 2500K was 21.8% ahead. Roll on to 2017. Once again, we've got an 8370. This time, however, they're using a 3570K instead of the 2500K. So again, there's another upgrade on Sandy Bridge and the difference is 19.5%. There is one or two very interesting things about this result though. Look at the top. Back in 2012, they actually benched 1080p, yet in 2017, they have for some reason regressed to 720p. And yet the difference is down with a faster CPU. But what I found most interesting about this result was this. When you look at their benchmark suite, Anno 2205, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Crisis 3. It's fairly well balanced and wait a minute, StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Now, StarCraft 2 is notorious for being the worst optimised game in existence. It is worse than single threaded. Let me show you what I mean by that. The 7700K is 26% faster than the 7600K. 26% faster in a single threaded test. And we can see here it is all about IPC and single thread. 7700K twice as fast as the 5820K. I mean, when did you last see that? Never. But looking at the bottom, we can see here that the i5-3570K is almost twice as fast as the FX8370. In actual fact, 80% faster. Now, I found this very interesting and it's part of what this video is about. So what happens when you take that massive outlier out of PC games hardware's chart? The difference is now down to 9.2%, less than half of what it was previously, simply by removing one game. That is the difference that a single outlier can make to the overall totals. But think about this, 3570K is only 9.2% faster than the FX8370 at 720p today. When you're talking about outliers, computer bases numbers were outliers. However, they only benched the most modern titles. Steve at Hardware Unboxed, his numbers are also outliers because he is 20% ahead, while the average is really around about the 10% mark. But again, this is kind of what this video is about, because the fact of the matter is, reviewers can pretty much prove anything they want to prove. There's nothing wrong with Steve's numbers, or computer bases for that matter. They are legitimate, they are just outliers. The reasons for which are down to game choices, and down to different game settings, different memory speeds, that sort of thing. Over time, FX closed the gap to Sandy Bridge. Almost every source out there shows that to be the case. I consider this point proven, and I consider it over. If anybody disagrees, then you can take Kyle's advice and trawl through the history of these benchmarks and prove me wrong. So moving on from that, how is it even possible that, with much faster graphics cards, how is it even possible that FX closed the gap? In the Tech Press Loses the Plot video, I said that it was down to multi-threading. However, here we can see that FX even caught up with the 2600K, the i7, which of course has eight threads. If you load FX and load an i7 2600K, they're gonna be pretty close in actual fact. But that result still made me realize that it wasn't all to do with games becoming more multi-threaded. There's a combination of things going on here. For example, StarCraft was quite heavily benchmarked back then and was a massive contributor to FX's demise back then. Here we can see on the Anantech review, 2500K is massively ahead of the 8350. That is a 35% lead. Medium graphics, however, and again at very low resolution. This one result more than any other tipped the balance well in favor. Obviously, when you move on to 2017, in most cases, StarCraft 2 would not be getting benchmarked, apart from in those sites that seem to think it's a good CPU test. I don't know what StarCraft 2 is doing, but there is simply no way that that is a relevant CPU benchmark. And when you drop settings down even lower, you're simply compounding these issues. You're not showing a true CPU bottleneck. All you're doing is compounding the issue by forcing the game to even more emphasize that single core, that IPC, smaller cache sizes, that kind of thing. AMD could have created a CPU that absolutely destroys Intel at StarCraft 2. No problem whatsoever. It would have had one core at very high clock speed and it would have been utter crap at everything else. But how is it possible though, with much faster graphics cards, 
FX closed the gap if it wasn't multi-threading? What is it? I had to think about it and it became very, very clear. Check out the Steam hardware survey. The most popular monitor size is, of course, 1080p, with 43% of people using 1080p monitors. Now, the vast majority of those not using 1080p are using less than 1080p. And what this effectively means is, as a game developer, a AAA game developer who is really optimizing graphics is much more likely to target 60 frames per second at 1080p. So you've got a Titan X Pascal, which is five times faster than a GTX 680. You don't target 300 frames per second at 1080p. You target 60 frames per second at 1080p. And what do you do with the extra horsepower? You make the graphics better. More triangles. This is why Lara's had a bit of a facelift. She no longer looks like this and instead looks like this. The extra graphics power does not go to higher frame rate. The game developers make games look better while targeting 1080p 60 frames per second. Now they typically have much better hardware than we do. Could even be two Radeon Pro Duos or they could be using Titan X's, something like that. They're developing games for the future while expecting graphics hardware to be at a certain level at 1080p. But if you want to play the old Tomb Raider at a thousand frames per second, then for sure the 7700K is the CPU to get. The rest of us, however, are playing games at the highest settings, especially when you're using a graphics card like, for example, the aforementioned Titan X or a 1080 Ti. And this is my big problem. When we get a bunch of reviewers dropping game settings, dropping resolutions in order to create a winner. In the vast majority of games, you are GPU bound no matter what. One or two that are badly optimized. But in general, there should only be a few percent between any capable CPU. We are not really seeing that with Ryzen, but I'll get to that point in the follow up video now. I'm not going to make this a long video because it's already been long enough talking about this subject. You will see part two of this very soon. But the point here is dropping settings in order to create a clear winner. Where exactly do you stop? I've been testing a lot of Tomb Raider recently, but here is the inbuilt benchmark. And we can see that at very high settings, the 7700K wins by 7.8 and then at high it's up to 12.6 and then medium with the gap continuing to increase. Now, if you've got a game that is really badly optimized to start with, for example, something like Starcraft or Arma 3, then you're going to see this compounded as you drop settings. Which one do you believe? Where do you decide when to stop? Is it okay to go to high? Is 7.8% a good enough gap? The thing you have to realize here is there's a lot of guys out there doing a lot of benchmarks. But if you were looking at straight bars with all CPUs, all the same, they would have nothing to do. Nobody would bother reading their articles. When it comes to CPU benchmarks, nobody would even bother benchmarking gaming because they would all be the same, in theory. And that is the main reason why you see these lower settings. There is always an element of entertainment in all of this. You maybe not realize it, but I am an entertainer in some fashion. And these guys making the benchmark videos they are trying to entertain you and flat bars do not entertain. Winners entertain though and winners is what causes all the discussion. But this is what I meant when I said that anybody, any reviewer can give any result that they want. That is the truth about this. So obviously there is going to be some kind of resistance to anything that basically shows games as a tie between all CPUs. But they needn't worry too much about it because cores will make a difference. We can see in other reviews that two cores, four cores, there is a big difference. One day before long, eight cores will make a difference because game developers will move past four cores. They will increase image quality, which while we are stuck on quad cores, is unlikely to continue much past the point we are at. The game developers will fill up those eight CPU cores and four core CPUs will be where two core CPUs are today. This is what happened before, it will happen again. It's like I said in my review, it's a matter of when. Not if, it is when this actually happens. Now I've kind of rambled on here a bit, but I really just wanted to get this video done with now while I move on to the main part and something that you guys are going to find really, really interesting. I'll catch you later, guys.